got home, I felt like it was just naturally where I was supposed to be. And nothing else in the world matters. you know, we don't know what's wrong with you. 
And one doctor, you know, said some things, and I was like, you know what, I'm just done with UX. So I had a good friend of mine who was in medical school in the Dominican Republic, and I was researching online, and rheumatoid arthritis came up. And no one in my life had it. I'd never heard of it before. I didn't know anything about it. And so I messaged her because I started to get some ulnar deviation in my hands, and I sent her pictures. And I was like, Donnie, I have an issue. Can you help me? And she knew right away. And she's like, Angela, you need to go to your doctor. And the way that you need to phrase it is I want to rule out rheumatoid arthritis. So I said, okay. So I went to my primary doctor. I was like, I want to rule out rheumatoid arthritis. I don't understand why it's so hard to get a referral to a rheumatologist in the first place. But this is what we need to do. And I'm not going to deal with you guys telling me no anymore. So I went to the rheumatologist a couple weeks later, instant diagnosis. So they put me on Humira, and they put me on Prednisone, they put me on Flexeril, they put me on Vicodin, they put me on Percocet, I mean, the whole, the whole nine yards they put me on. And for the first couple weeks, it had kind of a placebo effect, if you will, um, and I felt better. And then after, after about two, two to three months, my body crashed, like complete, like took a complete die. And um, the medicine had made me so sick that I realized that the TNF cell inhibitors would, wouldn't work for my body type. It actually only works for one third of patients, um, unbeknownst to me at the time. And so, yeah, and so then I ended up becoming very sick and I became bedridden. And when you're bedridden with RA, you lose the ability to move. And so it got to the point where I went from being a star athlete to being unable to open a water bottle. I'd wake up in the morning, my hands would be puffy, and I had to have my boyfriend help me. And so I spent months dealing with this, and I developed a chip on my shoulder because I was so angry that I had this promising career, and all of a sudden my body was just completely deceiving me. And I didn't even do anything to cause it. It's not like I was being irresponsible. I had a good diet, I was training, I was and you know, and it, it's not bad to look at. And so, yeah, and so I started, um, so I started doing research and I talked to my rheumatologist and I went to actually an event at the Upper International Research Foundation. And I talked to <coughs> Dr. Um, Granger and I said, I have a hypothesis. With the TNF cell inhibitors, from what I can understand, essentially, if we can eradicate inflammation, it will subside the disease. So if I can achieve this by other means, can, you think that will be successful in helping me manage my disease because I really don't want to go on methotrexate. I'm not interested in going on other biologics. I just, this is a gray area to navigate. It's already scary and intimidating enough. And I'm just trying to go with what my instincts are telling me. And he's like, yeah, Angela, you absolutely can. And, but it's gonna be a very hard lifestyle. So that was all I needed. License to me to start researching. And so when I was little, I always wanted to be a scientist, um, but then I obviously took a different journey. Driving race cars is a lot more fun. Um, but uh, yeah, and so I started, research, I started researching medical journals, like endlessly, in and out, in and out. I started going to physical therapy. I adopted an anti-inflammatory diet. I started taking um, DHEA. And again, this is all experimentation that I wouldn't recommend for anyone else, but this is just what my story has been and what you know, has been working for me. And so within seven months of physical therapy and trying an anti-inflammatory diet and trying this stuff, I was still flaring, I was still de dealing with like searing pain, but I could manage. And I was so angry that I was able to channel that anger into some kind of power, and I couldn't even tell you how. Like I, I went and saw a trauma specialist because I had to mourn what my old body was and then learn how to adapt my new body. And so she told me something that actually transcends any health condition. She said, Angela, you know, this disease has already taken so much from you. Do not let it take any more. You fight. And so using that, and this, you know, she told me this years ago, and I still remember this, and I think about it weekly, because whenever things get hard, I think about this. And so, yeah, and so I used that, and I channeled it, and I went back to racing triathlon, and I look normal, but I sustained permanent, permanent mobility damage. And so, but even at this time, I was racing, um, and I, was, I went back to racing regular athletes, and then I started beating them, I think simply because I was angry. <laughs> and so, yeah, and so I started doing that, and um, then they were coming out with the Paralympics, so I switched into the para division, which ended up being very controversial, because when you look like this, and you can wear high heels and do things, people don't think you're sick. 
And so then it became a thing of having to prove that I was sick. And there was this thread of like 50,000 people that were talking about me and whether I was really sick or whether I was making it up. And I ended up coming out on the cover of Arthritis National Research Foundation. And I had to submit my medical records to verify that there actually was something. Because they're like, how can you do what you do? I was like, I don't know. I'm just a redhead. This is in our DNA. <laughs> and so, you know. And so, yeah. And um, so I switched into the, to the physically challenged division. I was going to go to the Paralympics. And in the year that I was training for that, um, my sports medicine doctor, which had cleared me for this, was like, Angela, you, you can't race anymore. Like, you're done. And so then I ended up having to have two shoulder surgeries. I had to have knee surgery. And um, and it was bad. Like, it was bad. Like, it was devastating. It was who I was. It was what I knew. It was my friends. I actually was based here in La Jolla, right down the street. Like, I've ridden around this on my, on my bike. And I got to the point where I couldn't ride a bike anymore. I couldn't run anymore. All of my friends and family, um, you know, like, Everyone knew how much triathlon meant to me, and I lost everything that I was. So I went through a year of severe depression, alcoholism, and just being lost. So I saw that trauma specialist again and tried to figure out what to do. And in the interim, I was like, you know what, I'm not going to have a regular job because who wants that? I don't want that. So um, I'm dramatic. So I went to LA and started acting. And, um, you know, dabbled in that for a little bit, did a feature film internationally, won a Best Actress Award for it. That was, that was cool. Like, yeah, doing the celebrity thing is fun. But I was, I was still empty. And um, then 17 months ago, and as all this stuff was going on, you know, I'm still flaring, but I was making progress and kind of understanding how to manage the disease, how to live with it, how to adapt my life around it. And so 17 months ago, I sat in the race car. And as soon as I sat in the race car, I felt home. Like that weird depression that I had carried for years finally lifted. And I started driving. And as a driver with the cars that I drive, open wheel, open cockpit, it's like the most authentic form of driving that you can do. Like I love it. Like I think it's amazing. I think it's best. And so, but we don't have power steering. So I literally have to muscle the car. What does RA affect the most? Your hands and your arms. What have I had? Two shoulder surgeries. Still damage, still pain, still all this stuff going on. But for some reason, when I'm in the car, pain doesn't matter. RA doesn't matter. Depression doesn't matter. Nothing else in the world matters. And so I've spent the last 17 months focusing my efforts on this. I went to the US Championships. I'm the first female to do so. And I'm racing against men. And these are healthy, young, 19-year-old boys. Yeah, so they can obviously muscle the car a lot better than I can. However, again, I'm a redhead. So they underestimated me. So I went into a winter championship, and I won. And I beat the boys. And then I went to US championships, and that was a lot harder. I was mid-pack, I had some car issues. But it was a lot of fun. And then, uh, and then I just switched into some sports car stuff, and that was last year. And then, um, you know, it did start to take a toll on my body trying to do all of this, and my shoulder, and some of the pain and stuff started to come back. So then I took this year off, and I started doing experimental treatment. And again, I don't recommend it for anyone else, but I like to experiment because I, as we await for, you know, treatment that can work for us, I think that it behooves us to advocate and research for ourselves. So I took, took the year off and I started doing other treatment and I'm actually having success with it. And I'm not only having success, I'm getting to the point where I'm feeling like I did before I was diagnosed. So now, I was actually just at the Indy 500 meeting with IndyCar teams in terms of doing Indy Lights and getting into very serious racing, and that's gonna be a lot more G-force, it's gonna be obviously no power steering. And so, I think what I wanna drive home to everyone with this is, you know, I'm coming up on 10 years of diagnosis, and it's been very challenging in many, many regards. First and foremost is mental health, because it's very easy to 
cope any way that we can with the disease, the pain, the depression, mourning the loss of our own body, trying to get ourselves out of it, trying to explain to others. Yeah, so I'm having a flare. I've been in bed for four days. How, how am I gonna explain this to, to my friends? What's wrong with you? What are you sick, do you have the flu? And I'm like, all right, imagine taking a hot knife, running it up and down your bones after you have food poisoning and you're completely exhausted, all right? That's just, that's just the start of it, okay? So even though I look like this, so then now I carry around my phone and after they did the shoulder surgeries, I show them, I show them the picture. They're like, I'm like, this is healthy tissue? This is my tissue. Is there any questions here? All right, good, I'm glad we ended that discussion now. And so, you know, so I think first and foremost is to take care of our mental health because this is a very difficult thing to navigate. Pain's difficult to navigate. Just all these feelings, right? So I recommend, you know, finding a very good therapist and reaching out to your network, having a good support network. I also recommend, you know, getting into research, researching yourself, advocating for yourself. But at the end of the day, as I learned, our disease cannot define us because it's already taken as much as it has. So even though it's a component of our life, we can reinvent ourselves. I didn't start driving race cars until eight years after diagnosis. I had one rheumatologist tell me that I would be crippled by year 10. I'm not gonna tell you what I said to him, but <laughs> suffice to say, here I am, not even close to crippled, nor will I be. And so I'm privileged to tell my story and I'm privileged to be able to you know, just have the opportunities that I have because even though I wouldn't wish RA on my worst enemy, I think that it's been the best blessing in my life because I, through suffering, you find out who you really are. You also find out <coughs> who's gonna be there for you. And it's gonna get hard and it's gonna get dirty and it's gonna be excruciating. But it's also gonna create such amazing bonds. And with this community and with just all the people that I've met, like I've made lifelong friends that I otherwise wouldn't, wouldn't know, wouldn't connect with, just completely different walks of life. And it's just turned out to be like just an amazing experience for me. Pain, stress, any of this aside, like it's been an extraordinary thing. And so turning our pain into power and not letting it define us is really what you know, I, I hope to be able to convey to you. And so I really appreciate you guys taking the time to listen to me. And I'm happy to answer any questions and then take pictures afterwards. <laughs> so, thank you. Thank you, Angela. What an amazing story. I mean, it's that fighting spirit. Thank you for it.